Hello, this is going to be experiment two, filling out the uh, summary uh, data table. And what I've got is I've got my data uh, from table one, and I've got my data here for two milliliters. And I did three calibration attempts before I got to attempts four and five. And four and five were my two attempts that were within uh, 0 0.02 milliliters. So, um, and then I've got the rest of my data here as well. Uh, but we're going to focus on just showing you how to do uh, the 2.0 milliliter calculations. And I've got my data table here that we're going to be filling out today. And what I've done is I've taken from calibration attempt four and five, and these three are from number four, and these three are from number five. My six masses of H2O delivered, those are the numbers we're gonna to need to fill out this first column. And I've chosen these six because again, these are my two good calibration attempts within 0.02 uh, grams, 0 0.02 milliliters is really was the test, but um, what we saw was that when the density is so close to zero, then uh, the milliliters and the grams are the same, which is something that we use throughout this course. All right, so um, now I'm gonna go through my columns here. And the first one is I'm gonna do average mass of water. And average, of course, is just gonna be average over all six of these. So uh, let me see. 1.99 plus 1.99 plus 2.01 plus 2.03 plus 2.03 plus 2.01 divided by 6. I get 2.01. So 2.01 is going to be my average mass of water. Standard deviation mass of water, well, uh, so for that, I'm going to have to do the standard deviation formula. And uh, I don't know if that's going to work. Let's pull up Microsoft Excel. All and let's go new. Because I like to do my standard deviations in Microsoft Excel. And let me bring that so that it's on the screen. There we go. Yep, how about right there? And let me make it a little bigger. Because all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my six values, my 1.99, 1.99. And actually, I'll just do my average here too. I'm going to type in average, open a parenthesis, just to double check. All six of those, close the parenthesis, hit return. So that's my average. And equals STDEV, open parenthesis, and don't get your average, just your six values. My standard deviation is 0 0.017, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, to two decimal places, my standard deviation is going to be 0 0.02, and I'll just note here, STDEV, to keep track of what's in my table here. So to two decimal places, I'm going to round 0 0.02. You might need that later. And the plus or minus is over here. Remember, we're just putting numbers in here, not units. Um, and we've rounded it to the same number of decimal places as our average mass of water. That's a good rule of thumb. Um, if you were to do a rigorous analysis of the significant figures, 
99% of the time, the number of decimal places in your standard deviation is also the number of decimal places in your average. Now let's go for average milliliters of water. Um, in order to do this, uh, we really need to look at what our density is. And our density for my values, well, my temperature was um, 19.7 and 20. So I'm actually going to average the two values here to get an average density. And let's see, so 0 0.998265. is my density for three of the values and 0 0.998203 0 0.998265 plus 0 0.998203 divided by two I get 0 0.998234 grams per milliliter. Let's get that up on screen. And then, again, this is uh, similar to what we did before. So I have 2.01 grams. I have 0 0.998234 grams for one milliliter. So, and now I do the math, 2.01 divided by 0 0.998234, I get 2.01, so uh, milliliters. So those numbers will be the same. Yes, it's 2.013, uh, but to sig figs, it's the same. So we'll write it right there. You can do the same thing with your standard deviation for mass to turn your standard deviation into milliliters and you will get 0 0.02 as well using the same logic. Now the error. The error is the difference between your uh, average milliliters and what you were trying to go for. So for us, it's 2.01 minus 2.00 and in the handout for this experiment it says treat this as if it has infinite sig figs because that's we're going for exactly two not anything with sig figs that makes sure that we limit our sig figs here and our error is 0 0.01 that's going to be milliliters and we're referring to the difference here between our experimental minus our correct. And that's in milliliters as well. And the percent error is going to be, let's see if I can zoom it in here. Percent error is this number is always in the numerator, so that's just our error divided by our correct number, or accepted, times 100%. So that's going to be 0 0.01 over 2.00, dot, dot, dot. We're only, since we're dividing here, we're only going to have one sig fig in our answer. And 0 0.01 divided by 2 is, oh, times 100. Common mistake to forget that times 100, as I just demonstrate. 0.5%. And that is one sig fig. And that is how you're going to do the 2 milliliter, and you're going to do the same thing for your 1 and 0.5 milliliter. And your graduated cylinder, by the way.